somewhat frustrated with what was happening in politics in Brazil. And, and all of my friends were, were somehow in the same place that nothing is happening and, and things don't seem to get better. And then suddenly, by being part of a group of students that talk with each other critically and, and bring such strong ideas, uh, I was inspired and this gave my strength back, you know? Just to tell that I don't remember specifically specifically what they brought, but I remember being really moved by the strength that is uh, present in schools and that we don't acknowledge. You know? uh, during my course in economics, I wanted to work with education. My, my mom is a teacher, so I always uh, search for organizations where I could make a difference in this, uh, this field. And um, while doing so, I, I reached to a group that was being created that's called NOS. NOS uh, is um, we in, in English, right? And in, in this community, I... I uh, made contact with uh, an education activist called Marcelo Rocha. I, I can send the link later. Uh, that like he has, he is part of all minorities. He is black, uh, gay. He is part of the evangelical community, religious, which is also uh, a sort of conflict because there are a lot of conservatives in this realm, but just to say that he, he is really a fighter. And uh, talking with him, we, we, we reached the conclusion that we could do something for education. And uh, he already had this idea that he called the desire map of students. So desire map was our big project to reimagine education. We wanted to talk with students all around Brazil and collect desires from each student to see what was the education they had in mind. Because we, we understood that uh, usually students are not listened in this way. You can have experiences of, of talks with students, of uh, evaluations, right, of how education is, etc. But you don't really listen their desires and affections and their subjectivity. I was always somewhat addicted to reading and I like knowledge in general. I like making questions and searching for stuff. Uh, but I all also, maybe because of my privilege, I was also somewhat alienated of some of the main problems around me. And suddenly when I went into university with people from all around Brazil and different uh, incomes, house incomes, right? I realized that Everyone had their fight, somehow, uh, against racism, against homophobia, against my misogyny. And I found myself in this place that I wanted to have my fight too, because, or, or else I, I wouldn't be part of, of this group that was trying to make the world a better place you know I, I i felt compelled to fight too also because i i i, I like fighting in, in a way uh, when i play soccer for example i never stop running like i'm this guy that you know i i don't even play that good but i don't stop running because i'm into it with all my body and in this university when i realized that all people had their fights 
I wanted to use this knowledge that I had uh, in a critical way. And I, I, I took my fight, my personal fight, to be the fight for education. Maybe because of my mother, maybe because I like reading and passing knowledge and ideas along. I mean, all of it surrounded me into this this way. And also because I had friends in this university that they were there. I mean, they, they passed the, the bar, right, the exams to be there. And suddenly they had to leave because they didn't have the money enough or to eat or to stay in a home. And for me, this was absurd. I, I couldn't understand. Like, uh, I that always uh, felt proud to understand everything, uh, suddenly saw something that made absolutely no sense. So I, I had to had to fight to, to make it right. So the, the one... Uh, webinar or something like this that I, I saw from beginning to end was this one about a Brazilian experience that is Escola Ciranda. Uh, I, I saw it from beginning to end because in the beginning I realized that the internet was really bad and a lot of things we're starting to um, we're starting to become lost in translation. You no, know? like people said something and then suddenly the others didn't understand. And I put myself in this place to be a, a secondary translator. And I was writing things in the chat for people to to continue to read and and, and talk and make this bridge between Brazilian and English. Uh, and in the end, I became friends with, with people from Siranda. And I, I'm actually in their WhatsApp group. <laughs> and I was talking to them right now because Deborah is there. Deborah is the one that was invited to speak. And I told her, ah, Deborah, I, I work with education. It was always my purpose. But uh, nowadays, I'm sort of distant from these new initiatives, from people trying to make uh, a reimagined education or something like this. And I, I want to be a part of more of this practical side, besides reading about it. I want to be side by side with students and talk to them. And so I'm now in the WhatsApp group and uh, all because of the conference. So I, I also thank you <laughs> for this opportunity. And I think that's one of the ideas, right? To make people connect and, and start helping each other. Mm -hmm.